Welcome back. back. I'm Adam. I'm Brett. And we are the, the Wall Twins. Twins. If this is your first time here with us, though, welcome. welcome. Consider subscribing and hit the notification bell so you don't miss anything that we do, be it cooking, be it having fun, or just giving you advice, advice you about go. griddle cooking, which is what this video is all about. We just wanted to come and give a short list. We've been talking about doing this for a little while. Being on social media and being part of the Blackstone community for over a year now, we have people reach out to us all the time through Facebook, through Instagram, and through YouTube with a ton of questions. And so we've kind of compiled those questions into a, hey, things to avoid if you're new to griddle cooking or if you're concerned we just want a one-stop shop place to go these are the things that we've learned over the past year and a half yep. of griddle cooking and, and what we've been able to bring from our cooking experience to the griddle right and specifically with the Blackstone I mean we have we, we estimate somewhere over 400 cooks on this and more over at Brett's. Yeah, yeah close so, to a thousand probably <laughs> between the two of us. Uh, but we, we, we want to bring that experience and share it with you. So without further ado, Brett, let's just get right into the list. So these are our top pieces of advice that we could give and in no particular order, just things to know as you grow through your Gretel journey. <laughs> yeah, to start off, uh, don't be caught without the right accessories. Right, that's a great way of putting it. We've been on Facebook and I love the posts when people are like, I just got my brand new Blackstone and the thousand dollars worth of accessories in their table it looks awesome very and impressive it, it is impressive, impressive but also at the same time there's a lot of things that you're not going to need the best advice I got was actually from my wife at the, at the beginning when I got the five-piece griddle kit for $20 by the way start there start there <laughs> because it was a great place to start she said why don't you start there and then see what you do what you'll need along the way and then we can add to it and it was awesome because we have a ton of accessories we use now, but it grew over time. And that five piece kit comes with, I think, the most important tool that you really need, which is that scraper. Yeah, the scraper, which we use, uh, my, I use my scraper, you use yours. And in every fact, cook. still the OG. When I got my Blackstone, yep. Adam actually gifted me that five piece set, and we both still use the OG scraper from that set. Right. And what, what I mean, though, by not being caught without the right uh, tool, uh, my wife did get me a pair of the travel tongs from Blackstone, which are awesome if you're camping on a 17 inch. Correct. On the 36 inch, and we've got all bacon. I've been caught trying to use those little things on the hot surface. Doesn't work very well. Yeah. So just make sure you have the right tools to help you while you're griddle cooking. Yep, exactly right. And uh, moving on, what's next, Adam? Probably the biggest question we get asked all the time is which oil do you use and which is the best oil? The answer to that is yes. yes. There really is no best option. However, certain cool cooks do require certain oils per se. In fact, Blackstone recently in their newsletter came out with some great advice. One of the things they talk about is the smoke point. The main difference to keep in mind when selecting which oil to use is the smoking point, the temperature at which the fats in the oil start to break down and release free radicals and acrolein and pungent taste. When you look at the oil, it should have the smoke point on there. You've got canola, coconut, olive. They're all gonna have different smoke points and might be used for different cooks, avocado, and really you could even use butter, Crisco. Some people reach out and say, hey, you gotta use ghee. Use what works for you. We have yep. found that if you're just cooking, uh, doing a basic cook on the griddle, we use canola or vegetable oil almost exclusively. We yeah. use olive oil every once in a while. Yep. And there's no rhyme or reason to it, but keep in mind, people do have like peanut allergies. So if you're right. gonna use peanut oil, keep that in mind right. because it does coat and steak. And so with that, in fact, I do have the newsletter pulled up. It's one thing, I, one bit of advice I would give you, even if you don't have a Blackstone, subscribe to the Blackstone newsletter. They always have tips and tricks like this and a lot of the recipes posted. It's awesome. So that's a little plug for that as well. We're not associated with Blackstone. We just really like the goods that they have. <laughs> and we love the Blackstone itself. And next spread on the list is a big one. And this is a lesson learned type sitch. Yes. Don't just have one tank of propane. Invest in a second and make sure that whilst you're using the second one, it's whilst. Whilst using your <laughs> second one, maybe early on, go refill the second one. And I have a personal preference on this. I actually take my two attractor supply right. and have it filled. They're actually able to put more propane into right. it than if you go to one of those propane exchange right. stations. And a lot of people have a lot of advice about what works best. Some people hook up to the natural gas. This is for the regular person. I don't have a tractor supply or oddly enough, I don't have anywhere near me that fills it up. So I, I would have to go far enough away. I do have two tanks. I have a Lowe's just down the street from me and I always make sure I've got the extra one ready to go. And the tanks last a long time, but there's nothing worse which happened to us on the 4th of July. We were doing a big cook. 
We went to go swap out the empty tank and Lowe's was completely out. So yeah. fortunately we had enough propane to get us through, but that's our, that's a big advice. Avoid that mistake of just having the one propane tank, thinking it's gonna be just enough because you know when you're gonna run out? In, in the, the middle, middle of, of a cook. cook. <laughs> Happens every time. <laughs> that's, and that's only when you run out, is in the middle of a cook. That's when you find out you're out. <laughs> Surprise. Right. One thing too, and we gave, we gave this a little bit of advice in our tips and tricks video. You wanna avoid multiple trips inside and outside when you're griddle cooking. One of the biggest advantages to cooking on the Blackstone or the outdoor griddle is, well, that it's outdoors. You keep the heat outside and a lot of the stank, especially if you're doing seafood cooks or shrimp, fish which we out. love. It keeps that fishy smell out. But the thing is, is it does get rough if you're running inside and out, coming back and forth. And for us, we're fortunate because it's just around the corner, but you've seen CJ and Nathan, usually CJ that yep. has to do that walk of shame. <sighs> I'm gonna have to make the walk of shame. Yeah! <clears throat> What'd you forget? Lettuce. Well, there he goes. There he goes, ladies and gentlemen. The y'all gives shame. AJ, I feel your pain, bro. Trust me. <laughs> and their walk is a little bit further than ours. You want to try to, to find a way that works for you to get everything inside and out. We actually went and found these big busing tubs that really work well to carry everything out. And yep. we have a lot of small children that carry in everything in. Yes. Yeah, <laughs> so if you do forget things, make sure you have small children <laughs> to run your errands for you. But just a bit of advice. Find a way to get everything out in one trip. And I love seeing the cart prep carts and things that people have to help so with that. So inventive. Absolutely. Love it, yeah. and, and to add on, you know, there's a lot of channels and a lot of people that have advice. So, you right, know. probably the biggest key reason for that is you don't want to be stuck without something when you're in the middle of the cook because once you put the food down, it's usually go, go, go. It is. So, you got to have what you need out there on the ready. Yeah, and oh. speaking of like uh, not too long ago, we did that inside out grilled cheese sandwich, and that was, once that cheese was down, and we were <laughs> the point of no return, we had to finish. So, if you didn't have a spatula yep. <laughs> to flip it, we're, we're burning hands. Not only that, then. we meant to have the dome to melt the cheese, we didn't. Have that was it. That, yep, we didn't exactly have the dome right. out, so it, it was lesson learned. And it still melted. Great. It was great. Yeah. So. Fantastic. Check out that video. It was good. Okay. Eggs. You want to know how to make eggs sexy? Blackstone, Blackstone Betty. Betty. She, she, <laughs> she makes it. the sexiest eggs, uh, probably known to mankind. And she also lets you see how easy it really is. It eggs. Uh, people get intimidated by eggs, right. and they're not intimidating at all. So, so as far as it being something to avoid, is avoid cooking them too hot. Anything above super low is going to overcook your eggs. They cook really quick, but guess what on low? Or as Blackstone Betty does, she turns the heat off first yep. before she starts her eggs and they come out perfect every time. So learn how to do eggs well. So as far as avoiding, just avoid cooking them too high. Okay. The next piece of advice that we can give, something to avoid is not knowing your zones. Yes. <laughs> I don't know how to say it this way. Uh, basically, you're gonna have hot parts on your griddle and cooler griddle parts. I know right in the middle of my griddle cooks extremely hot. In fact, when people ask me to temp it out, which we do have the infrared thermometer and people have been asking us more and more for the exact temperatures. And I think the thought process there is like, if you're baking something, you need to know what to turn the oven on. The difference is out here, Brett, you're yeah. actively cooking. Correct. I'm glad you brought that up because when you're following a recipe or watching a cooking channel, they're saying, bake this at 420 degrees. The oven can get to an exact temperature. It's designed that way. The biggest thing is remember, and we got this is the best thing. We, I, one, of the biggest take away, biggest, one of the biggest takeaways from Todd Tobin when we got to hang out with him is he said, you need a heating source and you need something to heat. And then someone to cook it. And so we have the heating source, which is the Blackstone. Even if you're on medium low and something needs to be hot, if it can't get hotter, it's just gonna take longer. Right. And that's one thing we really are careful with. Sometimes, obviously, if we're searing our steak, we want it above a certain temperature. So we use the infrared for that. Uh, we've just learned to control the cook because as the one doing the cooking, we can control the cook. Correct. That said, it is good to know where your, where your griddle cooks hot and where it cooks cool. I know if I line my bacon on the outside edges of my griddle, it's gonna take an hour to cook it because it's just <laughs> a little bit cooler. Yes. In fact, most of my griddle, a lot of times if you watch during our videos, the corners are still at this point not all the way blackened. Mm -hmm. And I've seen some griddles that are all the way black. Am I a little jealous? Maybe a little bit, but I make it work because it works for me. Mine is all the way black and I'm <laughs> jealous of myself. Yeah. Okay, one thing that people really have a fear of, and we did too at first uh, as well as don't worry about small scratches right. or even like long scratches. It's okay, just keep cooking. You'll see that word of advice here at other channels on, on Facebook, Facebook, social media I always media appreciate all the time. when people say, just, just keep, keep cooking. cooking. Just exactly. It, it's a bit of positive uh, affirmation that what you're doing is working. Oh, you got a little scratch? Just keep cooking on it. Where you want to avoid, or the, the, the thing you want to avoid is if your food is constantly sticking. That might be your seasoning's flaking off too much or you're exposing too much of the cold rolled steel. You've got to get some of that seasoning 
layer back on, in which case you can reseason. We have a video on that, as does Blackstone Griddle's uh, channel to really help with a lot of that. So just avoid, avoid overthinking it and worrying. And I also do with that is that, oh my gosh, I just cleaned my griddle and now it looks like there's rust all over. Nine times out of 10, that rust is actually just the seasoning it's layer. It's the auburn color the, that the looks oil, like rust. The but oil is, yeah, the oil, the, the oil season layer, when not blackened with that bonding, does have a rust color to it. So don't stress it. Yeah, and take the word rust out and put the word auburn color in there. It <laughs> there sounds really go. good. And back to the scratch, where people say, oh my gosh, I scratched, what did I do wrong? You did nothing wrong, you cooked, which is right. Because if you didn't cook, then that scratch wouldn't be there. You could be, look how beautiful <laughs> this black stone is. Right. Have you cooked on it? Nope, and you notice no scratches. But it looks beautiful. <laughs> you might have scraped too hard. Just you'll learn to, to avoid that over time. But and, it's, yeah, and, and it's not as serious a problem as you think. Yeah, overall, just trust the process. Trust One the thing process. we have definitely learned about it. And uh, finally, the last piece of advice, and we'll do a bonus one after this, but the last piece of advice we can give is don't think you can't griddle something. There are some foods for sure, like somebody requested a London broil. That might be a little bit tough. Yeah. We could do it. It's a big ass. <laughs> I mean, yeah, and, and, and people will, and you'll see so sarcastically, oh, I'm gonna cook soup on there. And, and you know, it's, How do I boil water? Listen, if you need advice, go and ask for it, it's great, but also, be creative. That's why we we got to a point for a long time. We were doing cooks that people were saying, wrong tool, wrong job, don't do it. We looked at that as a challenge accepted. Yeah, so we were showing that you really can griddle. In fact, Leprechaun TV, I don't know that I could do this. He did a brisket on his, it was a five hour cook, but guess what? He did it. And the fact of the matter is, it's like, uh, that may not be something we do, but do what works for you. And if you think, hey, this might be something fun to try. In fact, one of our favorite cooks that we've done that I never would have if we hadn't seen this or tried it was the pizza. Uh, yeah. Our pizzas. And popcorn. And popcorn. Yeah, so there's little things. Uh, we've done chocolate chip cookies. There's so many things that, you, again, people say wrong tool, wrong job. We're like, nah. And also to words of advice, you will notice on social media, there are places for bullying. Uh, don't ever hesitate to reach out to us. We come from a place of positivity and we want to help because we want you to have the same positive experience with your Blackstone do. or your griddle that we have and we, we love to show uh, our enjoyment for it and we would like to share that with you. So It really is the one thing we say a lot in comments or just to people, we just, we're happy to share. We love learning to cook on the Blackstone griddle and sharing what we learn along the way. So Brett, that little bonus one, the little extra that I I was saying the biggest thing to avoid overthinking. overthinking don't overthink it try it out if it doesn't work move on i've burned so many buns i've burned <laughs> meat in fact in our in our pancake sausage video yep. man i destroyed those things just trying to smash how many smash burgers i've done and even the sausages those ones just all stuck they all came out ugly but guess what we kept going with it and, and the it food was amazing it was amazing so avoid overthinking and avoid the naysayers and the discouragement if it doesn't work try it again we promise everybody can griddle cook you just got to keep at it if you have any questions like Brett said reach out to us through Facebook through Instagram or even in the comments here uh, we love to help wherever we can we've loved the Blackstone griddle we've loved the griddle journey and we just love sharing what we learn in Brett and griddle nation and griddle nation and this is just the beginning yes yes it is a little over a year in and I agree this is just the beginning so more to come thank you for finding us thanks for hanging with us today and hopefully we've helped you in your griddle journey if you have some other advice or tips that you'd like to give, put them below because we'd love to share more and more. And if you're looking for more advice, go ahead and check in the comments, see what other griddlers have thought of that we haven't. And by the way, there's a lot more advice. We just wanted to cover some things that in the first year and a half that Correct. we've learned along the way. And there are more, but we also want to honor your time and not make this a two hour video. <laughs> <laughs> Which we could do. Yeah, we could go on We're and on about the black But Brett, aside from coming and sharing some great advice of things to avoid for new griddlers or even seasoned griddlers who are just looking at to, to up their game. As we always are too. Right? Why else are we doing this? Because all we do is twin. No, no matter what. what. And with that, we bid you adieu. And don't forget to like and subscribe. And griddle on! Shh.